Merry Christmas from Brother D. Roy Cruz, your life applications officer. And when I say the word brother, I'm not calling myself your brother because I'm black and I'm talking to just black folks. I, I'm calling myself your brother because I love you in the name of Jesus. All right. I am your brother. And I'm trying to be my brother and my sister's keeper. I'm trying, if you'll let me. Um, I understand the situation of black folks. I've heard it enough from my grandparents and uncles and aunts and my mom a little bit my mom my mom really didn't get into she never identified herself as one to be in the black struggle she identified herself back in the day uh, back in the 80s my mom identified herself early 80s that is she identified herself as a woman who was struggling to raise her son. Um, the one son that didn't get miscarried. The one son that was very sick when he was a little kid. Um, the one son that, you know, doesn't have a dad except for when he comes around. Um... She identified herself to me as a struggling woman. I really didn't really capitalize the fact that she was black. Because if she was a white woman, it would have been the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, And where we lived when the wealthy people came in. Um, and wanted to move their assets across the country somewhere or across city lines or whatever. And we, um, our apartment complex got uh, merged into the higher bidder. Um, we couldn't afford to live there. Everything was changing. The rent was going to go up and, and that and everything was changing. But it wasn't just my mom and me that were struggling. I remember a white lady who was a prostitute. Her son was always at my house and he would always call me Guan. Okay. And... We did not know until later that she was actually leaving a boy unattended. She was actually going out there and selling her body. And her kid was hanging out. She didn't she she knew you know whether it was going to be a uh, a uh, uh, you know me or one of my, you know, uh Spanish friends or 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 you know um, you know, uh, Asian or whoever that we were neighbors with. She knew one of us would take the kid in. We weren't going to let him stay out in the cold. Because she didn't, she didn't see us as a threat. And I don't know if that's because of her lifestyle or, or what it was. But we kind of snitched on her. She, you know, we went to take the boy home one day and she wasn't there. And some rich other white lady came and found out that the little boy was always jumping from house to house to house when his mom wasn't around. And she lost her kid. 
to whatever state system was going on at that time. It wasn't CYS, it was something else. Um, but my point in mentioning that is when you struggle with you know the other life okay when you struggle with living a double life or you struggle with drugs or alcohol or you struggle with domestic abuse or you struggle with um anything that is uh vulgar sinful okay we're all the same in that regard and there are rich people that if they lose their assets today if they lose their money they'll be just like this woman it's not going to save her because she's white If a husband and wife don't get along, they're, the race of their skin does not save them from cheating, e cheating on each other. If you get molested when you are a child, or raped when you are a child, for whatever reason, The color of your skin is not going to save you from being homosexual, transgender, or or uh, or some other form of something because you don't love yourself, because you're unhappy with yourself. I don't understand where anybody brings color into it on either side. All my life, if I put a, a, a black woman and a white woman together that are alcoholic or that ain't taking care of the kids properly, it doesn't matter the numbers on the other side of the two fences. The point is, if you put those two women together, their story sounds similar. Okay? That lets me know right there that maybe on this side of the fence, of this fence, there's a lot more of what this girl, because hers are less, there's more going there's more of the same going on this side of the fence than there is on this side of the fence. That's all that tells me. That doesn't tell me that the one with the less abuse on her side of the fence got a higher IQ. If she has a higher IQ, if that is that if that means anything, why did she fall into the same characteristic as this black woman in the first place? Did this black woman teach her? How to be a prostitute that's going to lose her kids? The world, first of all, let me say the woman's name. The woman's name is Lana Loctiff. Miss Red Ice, Lana Loctiff, and the guy that she is hosting the show with, the other host, co-host, whatever he is, or maybe she's the co-host, I don't know. Um, obviously, he, must, he might not be her husband, okay? I don't think he is. So I was wrong about that. Let me clear that. He might, I don't think he's her husband. And I think that they're actually coming from two studios. She's coming from some private studio near her home. And he is 
uh, coming from base. I think that's where he's coming from. He's coming from the actual studio. Um, but they're trying to run a network. Um, a network that will eventually build up the white race and help the white race stand up against everything that goes against it. Meanwhile, over in New York City, Harlem to be exact, you got Mr. Polite and Mr. Uh, Sayonetta and uh, Shaka Amos and um, people like that trying to do the same thing for black folks. They got black men over there getting back into having multiple wives so that these these black women can have uh, be safe and have a husband that's going to take care of them. So now, you know, if someone wants to follow polite, they'll go out and and have, you know, five black women. Okay. For a wife, you know, for, you know, so, you know, and, you know, they, you know, you, you want to, these people put down the Bible, but yet they want to practice things that only came from the Bible, that was recorded first in the Bible, you know. Um, they also believe in black nationalism. They believe that all the white folks should move out of Harlem and give it to them. Matter of fact, a lot of white people have moved out of Harlem. Harlem is a black city. And what's sad about it is if I'm if I'm looking at the camera angle, if I'm looking at the videos correctly, most of the people working in Harlem are white. It's the white people that are running the businesses and you know, it's the white people that are showing up for work every day, feeding the black folks and, and driving the buses and, you know, um, you know, uh, fighting crime and, and all these things, selling and, and retailing and, you know, and there may be a lot of black people that are working. It might go half and half as far as the work, the, the working class, but it's not a black city living on its own is my point and you got black folks see you're not going to go to a white neighborhood and see a bunch of white people loitering in front of any business whether it's closed down or not and just talking there for hours while everybody else is working because even if they have the money, they're not going to be out there by out there doing business business hours, just loitering and talking, talking about what's wrong with the black man, what's wrong with this man, and what's wrong with that man. You know, um, because they their friends that they like to talk to got to work, but in these black communities. You can waste your life just by worrying about what's wrong with the white man. What you got, what you going to do today, Tyrone? Oh, I'm going to go down to my favorite street. I'm going to catch up with the brothers. I'm going to catch up with my homies. We're going to go down there. We're going to get, we're going we gonna to kick it off. What you mean you're going to kick it off, Tyrone? Well, um, we're going to go down there. And who knows what the conversation going to turn to. It could be, you know, uh, it, it, it could be uh, anything. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to get back to talking about these stupid Asian people. I'd like to finish off where we left off yesterday. Talk about these Asian women that think they're too good for us. Whatever.
one thing that Mrs. Lana Loctef doesn't understand, obviously she spent a lot of time in the city. And the way she thinks, the stuff that comes out of her mouth on television, she claims she's traveled the world. She travels through Africa. I don't see why. With that kind of stuff coming out of her mouth. I don't see why. And if the, and if the Africans were watching her on uh, satellite, TV, whatever, and then they seen her, you know, <laughs> going through a safari in their country, you know, or, 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 you know, trying to do business profits or whatever. I think they would probably not allow her out of Africa. They'd probably try to put her behind bars for being a terrorist. I think. Stuff that comes out of her mouth. So, anybody who's been watching my channel knows that I think Black Lives Matter is the stupidest thing that ever was invented by black people. And white people just... I mean, white people have always, you know, that's that that's one thing. There's always racism. There's always been racism. And there will always be racism coming from every side. But I think since this Black Lives Matter campaign, which everybody says is ran by some George Soros nonsense, okay? Ever since that movement came about, white folks have lost a lot of respect for black people. You thought black folks hated you 20 years ago. I mean, I'm sorry, you thought white folks hated you 20 years ago. Well, they've lost a lot of respect for you today. And this Lana... Loctof, Loctef is a very prime example. Um, the banner should not be Black Lives Matter. It's supposed to be Black Folks Are Americans Too. That's what the banner is supposed to say. Black Folks Are Americans Too. Supposed to have five words here, not three. Black folks are Americans too. But black lives matter. What are you saying? You're saying that Asian lives don't matter, white lives don't matter, Spanish lives don't matter? And it ain't just the white folks that's losing respect for black folks when they come up with a, a slogan like that. Because it's totally low IQ. That is one thing that is low IQ. That right there. I don't think the situ the problem we're having has anything to do with any daggone IQ. That's the most racist white thing I've ever heard. But I do believe that whoever came up uh, with that slogan, Black Lives Matter, he got bigger problems than a, a sorry... IQ, he, 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 you know, <laughs> he has, he, he don't have a high or low IQ, he has no IQ. I'm surprised that some white hate group didn't, uh, Hunt them down and and, and, and and set their banners on fire and leave a message. And that's another place where I agree with Miss uh, Lana Loctef on Red Isis. They are a race that does take care of their enemies.
They take care of people that will stab them in the back. Um, even these KKK people. Last time I saw a live KKK rally was the black folks that wanted to fight. The white folks knew that they could sit there and say things that make you want to throw bricks at them. Make you want to hit them upside the head with a baseball bat. And I'm usually not a part of that crowd that will stand around and listen to such nonsense and let it get to me. But if somebody comes is you know let let let's let's you know and i found out i'm finding out through youtube that a lot of people that i look up to in the republican party this is what's bothering me this christmas this christmas right here this is what is bothering me I'm finding out that a lot of people in the Republican Party, and it's true, and a Democrat said it first. A liberal, nasty Democrat said it first, but it's true. There are a lot of people in the Republican Party that whether Donald Trump is a racist or not, they want Donald Trump for a different agenda than the agenda that black folks are voting for the same president for. You got all these black Christians voting for Donald Trump. But there's people, it ain't Donald Trump. Because if Donald Trump is a white nationalist, he's not stupid enough to, to say that and, and cause more anger to come his way than what's already what's already hitting him. Um, but there's people in the Republican Party that are trying to use Donald Trump to create a white to restore, in their opinion, to restore white control. When you say, and now you say, how how can I say that? You, you oh, you're you're talking out of the side of your mouth now, D. Roy Cruz. Am I? Okay. Let's get the picture, which I didn't do on the last two videos. Okay, let's say black folks live in this country. We can no longer use slavery as an excuse, but it's only been, what, 50 years or 100 years? I'm not talking about slavery, but I'm talking about since the civil rights movement, since we've been able to vote, what has it been, 50 years to 100 years, somewhere in there? Okay. Um, somewhere in between 50 and 100, okay. How long has it been since we've been able to um, be a free group of people operating on American soil? How long has it been? And don't forget, mind you, that if you if slavery really happened. Okay, don't forget that we lost any culture. We lost, black people need to understand this too. We lost any culture. We lost any uh, vitality, you know, any uh, possession that we had. Posterity that we had, we lost it. 
everything from the structure of the family to business to morals and laws especially when you try to practice segregation and put us in our own communities or leave communities and then turn around and call them ours we're forced to create cultures instead of embracing the one that's already here we're forced to embrace our own morals and laws and and we're forced to uh, create the family structure all over again. Husband, wife, children, what that means. Now, my mom brought me up in a black church. Let me ask you this, Miss Lana Loctoff, Loctoff. Um, my mom brought me up in a black church and after listening to this Red Ice Network not too long ago I was thinking that maybe my life would have been better if I had been brought up in a white church from the jump but then after listening to this group I'm kind of glad that I had the privilege of coming up in a black church first. Now, Miss Lana Locktef believes that white people are the culture of submissive wives and women who feel that men should be in charge and, and that white folks are... Uh, the, the cultures of raising kids to be good kids and, and teaching them to go to school and get an education and, and all this stuff. She, she's trying to say that that's a white thing. And to her, that's what it means to be white. If you think that every culture, every, every and I'm going to get into that in a second, if you think that every culture doesn't have a certain number of, of people in that culture that think the same, the exact same thing, you don't have a very high IQ, Miss Lana. You really don't. I watch black people raise their kids back in my day. I watched my mother and my grandmother raise me. Even to this day, I don't know what planet you on, sweetheart, but even to this day, when I go to work every day, I can talk to white folks about my grandmama. Okay? I talk to my white boss who's a little bit older than me. We talk about the, the days of our grandparents. We, we talk about the same thing. I listen to them tell me about their grandmama and their granddad. And their mom and their dad and, and the things that they went through in life. And, and, and I listen to them and they listen to me tell them the same thing. Not that much different. We're not that much different, Miss Lana. There's always going to be one of us had a little bit worse than the other one. But we're not that much different. What you don't seem to understand, Miss Lana Loctuff, is that 
in every culture, there are the idiots, there are the child molesters, there are the false religious people, the atheists, the gays, okay, the murderers, even in your race, Miss, Miss Lochtef, are there absolutely no white people in prison? There's black people in prison, Miss Lochtef, for armed robbery, for robbing the local candy store. They're in prison with a guy, a white man, who tried to kill thousands of people with an M16. And maybe there's a lot of black folks in prison, but there's some white folks in prison that all them black folks in there better leave them alone. The brother is dangerous. <laughs> Seriously. You know, and when I hear people like Colin Flaherty talk about, oh, they say black folks don't do mass murderers. They don't do mass shootings. Hold up. Between now and the early 80s when I was a kid, I heard of one black man going into a mall and just opening fire. And the mall that he opened fire on Mr. Colin Flaherty was a run-down mall anyway. I think it was here in Pittsburgh. Wasn't no white folks at the mall. Just black folks, and wasn't that many of them. Because the mall was run down, wasn't no business in it. Forget about how many times a black man pulled out a machine gun and just opened fire. Repeat back to me the death tolls between the two. Repeat back to me the death toll. Anyway, I love white people. The reason why I love white people is because when I go fight with white people, even when they're racist, they see me anywhere from a few months later to a year later, and they run up to me and give me a big old hug. They remember my name. They remember me. And they don't need to say they're sorry because I can tell by their emotion that they're sorry for what happened between us. But yet, if I dare correct a black man about himself and say, hold on a minute, let me talk to the white brother. Let me talk to him. Let me talk to him. And I talk to him and I come back and I say, this is how we're going to get along. What happens? He'll take his hatred for that white man in turn and attack me. I'm trying to create peace. He'll turn and attack me. You think black folks don't respect white folks? They don't like white folks? They don't like black folks. Even more. This is why when you tell me about black folks getting shot And all these black folks getting together, holding up riots and, and, and protesting because some brother that they don't even know got shot. He got shot really bad. I mean, they took their time killing him. 
whatever. They shot him and took 10 cops to shoot one black man. Now we got protests in these ghettos. Where these people just looking for an excuse to have a riot. These cities were never nothing in the first place. But a bunch of beautiful buildings waiting to be shot up. The devil was was hosting there just waiting for a reason to unleash the black demons. So what you have here is you have black folks that hate their own people more than they hate white folks. I go to work every day. Let me tell you something, Miss Red Ice. Let me tell you something, Mr. Colin Flaherty. If you if 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 you are pointing out everything negative about black folks, everything from them beating up on their white girlfriend, the flunk in school, the cheating on test scores, which was the latest thing I heard from Colin Flaherty. Now he's trying to kick black people out of the school system because he thinks that everybody's cheating. Okay. Um, you know, if you think that you as a white man and a white woman are looking at black folks and saying, man, look at these black people. What do you think I'm saying? What do you think I'm looking at? I just told somebody last night at work, why are they always black? That's exactly what came out of her mouth, and the lady laughed. Why are they always black? Yeah, I said that. It's very depressing. To us, Miss Lochtiff and Mr. Colin Flaherty, to see black folks killing each other and ending up in prison for killing others that ain't got nothing to do with them. It's it, to you. It's almost clowning. It's almost funny. Especially if you ain't got nothing to do with the white folks that got killed. You don't know them. But for us, it's very embarrassing. So, here's the picture. And I'm closing. Black nationalism, if that's what it is, if I got it right. Or, and I'm, I'm sorry, white nationalism, if that's what it is, if I got it right. White nationalism is about white people taking back what they feel belongs to them. And when you say, this is my question, when you say, I just want to be white. I understand you're sick and tired of the, the hostility towards white people and the degrading of white people in this country and what people are doing. But Miss Lochtev has a bigger agenda in mind. When you say, I just want to be white, what does that mean? What if I was to say, I just want to be black? How many different ways is there to raise your children? How many different ways is there to have a successful marriage? How many different ways is there to buy and sell? How many different right religions are there? You're wrong. 
There is a way and there is a culture. There is a group of people that is right. But the only way they can truly be right is if they, you know, the Bible tells us to go out and preach the gospel to every man, woman, and child and wheel them in. This is what the love of Jesus was. He didn't tell the Jews to keep their culture to themselves. He told them to graft the Gentiles in. If white people are so righteous and so pure, then what you should be doing, and I don't mind because, like, again, I love white people, and I know why I do. You should be getting white people or I'm sorry, you should be getting the rest of the world to be like you. Not separate yourself from everybody because you know you can and still be successful. No, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says go into all the world and bring them into the fold. Separation is not of God. It's nothing positive. You need to, if you're not going to blend, which you might be right for not blending, but you need to get others to blend with you. Love is diverse. It never worked in the past. What makes you think it's going to work now, Miss Lana? What makes you think it's going to work now, Mr. Colin Flaherty? What makes you think it's going to work now, Mr. Uh, David Duke? We don't need to be separate. We do need to be diverse. And if you're holding the keys, like, like the Lord told Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom. If you're holding the keys, white people, then you should unlock the doors and invite everybody in. Instead of trying to separate yourselves. Because separation is the same nonsense that Black Lives Matter and all these leftists are trying to do. Once they get done controlling everybody and putting us into a modern day slavery. You have a Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching. God bless you. I'm D-Roy Cruz, your Life Applications Officer. Please uh, leave a comment and let me know what you think so I can do more videos like this talking about this subject and answer your questions and we can work together to be a nation under God, not a nation under racism or a nation under segregation, but a nation under God in Jesus name. Talk to you soon. Merry Christmas.